Hey, everybody. Welcome to another edition of the Slightly Warped Podcast. We've been gone for a few days, but we are back at it again. I'm Rick. That's Big Show. Show, what's going on, man? Not a whole lot, sir. Happy New Year, I think. Isn't this our first show for the New Year? I believe it is. So, Happy you New know, Year to you. We we off always, you know, doing things. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Surviving the Winter Storm 2024. Right. Uh, a lot has happened since the last time uh, temperatures dropped. They haven't come back up yet. Um, man, um, this, the past Friday when we had the really big snowstorm out here, we'd lost power for almost a full day. Mm. Ah, that sucked. I just stay warm. Oh, we didn't stay here. <laughs> oh, okay. I was <laughs> yeah. curious. New. No. Go to a hotel. Nah, we uh, visited the in-laws. Fair enough. Hey, how you doing? You got heat? All right, we're coming on in. It's <laughs> late. Is the couch free? Yeah. <laughs> hey, we're just going to stay here, watch a little football. I think it was about 5 o'clock in the afternoon. <laughs> uh, the power company had uh, called, and they said that the situation was restored. So we're like, hey, uh, going to be going now. <laughs> <laughs> Don't mind me. Help yourself. Pretend like you're at home. Oh, you are at home. My fault. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, man. Yeah, we were like that. Cold. I don't know if you remember. It's probably a good 10 years or so ago. When we had that ginormous ice storm here in Kansas City. Oh, and I remember we were, that. That sucked. We Yeah, we were without power for almost two weeks. Damn. Hooked up, hooked up a generator and everything outside. You know what? I need a generator. Those things are the best. I want one that's already attached and wired into the house that, uh, you know, basically is solar powered. Mm -hmm. So you don't really have to worry about your electricity running it or running it off of gas, but it's solar powered by battery, that type of thing. But it's hardwired right into your house. Mm. You just So if you lose power, the generator automatically kicks on and, turns everything back on hmm i never even and thought they're, about that and they're quiet that generator i had is like a lawnmower running for two straight weeks but, I but bet man you did it power. keep the house warm i bet you it's a pretty big chunk of change for that solar power one. yeah it's not cheap it's not cheap but you know that's that's you know when i get win the lottery and get rich I'm gonna go. I'm spending all my all my money on a solar power generator. <laughs> hey, whatever it takes. <clears throat> spending my fortunes. So here we are. Um, I know this isn't the second week of the. Uh, well, technically, it is the second week of the month. It's just the second week of this month. Um, we're we're implementing our. I don't want to say who done it, but. Uh, what did we call them? Just uh, unsolved, unsolved mysteries, mysteries. Yeah, type of stuff. Yeah, things that make you go, "Hmm." I know that's already taken, but still, uh, they haven't used it in a while. We'll claim it. But today, I wanted to talk <laughs> about uh, a one D B Cooper. D B Cooper, the and legend. Um, for most of you guys that are not familiar with D B Cooper, I'll give you a quick rundown. I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory, but in a nutshell, back on November 24th of 1971, yes, I know that was 50 some odd years ago, um, alias Dan Cooper, at least we think his name was Dan, he hijacked a Boeing 727 and parachuted mid-flight before disappearing, and to this day, it is one of the most unsolved FBI mysteries around. Now, I'm going to go over the whole thing in a nutshell uh, to expand it for everybody else. And then we're going to, you know, just talk on it and give theories, joke around with it. But D.B. Cooper is actually a media epitaph for an unidentified um, man who hijacked the North East, excuse me, the Northwest Orient Airlines Flight 305. And again, it was a Boeing aircraft. It was set to leave Portland, Oregon 
on the way to Seattle, Washington. And this hijacker told a flight attendant he was armed with a bomb and he demanded $200,000. Chump changed now, uh, but I think it's the equivalent of about a million five now. And uh, he requested four parachutes uh, upon landing in Seattle. And after releasing the passengers in Seattle, the hijacker instructed flight the flight crew to refuel the aircraft and begin a second flight to Mexico City, where it was assumed he was going to, you know, drop out of the U.S. and uh, uh, lay low. Um, now, when they refueled in Reno, Nevada, about 30 minutes after taking off from Seattle, the hijacker opened the aircraft and he deployed the uh, the staircase. It was one of those small airplanes. The door and the staircase is integrated. And he parachuted uh, into the night over the southwestern Washington sky. And he's never been found again. Now, before we talk about it, I believe it was 1980. A small portion of the ransom money was found along the banks of the Columbia River near uh, Vancouver, Washington. And uh, this the discovery of the money renewed public interest in the mystery but it didn't yield any, any additional information about the hijacker, his fate, or uh, anything that happened after that. So, Big Show, talk to me. Do you so think they, that Cooper is alive? Oh, Do you think no. that he found his money? Do you think that he spent part of it, couldn't find the rest? Talk to me. Well, they gave him the money, when they refueled, right? Because yeah. when he left, so he had the money and the parachutes because he parachuted with the money. He jumped out with the money, correct? That is correct. And then they found some of the money, like you said, eight years later. Yeah. Do you believe that he lost some of it during the parachute out? I mean, I'm sure he lost it all because I'm sure he died that day. <laughs> oh, okay. That, that That's my theory. I mean, I'm thinking that he landed in some wilderness area that's not, you know, in that area, you know, that's nothing but wilderness, uh, you know, Utah, Wyoming, Washington, Oregon, all that stuff there. He sh shot out over Washington. So I, you think I don't he think ran think into he Yogi out there. I mean, possibly. I mean, but I think maybe like he landed, didn't land because he probably wasn't a trained parachutist. Hmm didn't know how to land maybe broke his leg maybe landed in a tree couldn't get down maybe he cut himself down hurt himself you know that type of thing and just didn't make it out of there because you know it's not it's not warm in washington oh nope. uh you know and if you're not dressed for the elements you know you could die pretty quick so i i think that because i'm pretty sure i read somewhere that they had like the serial numbers of the money or something of that nature that if they were back in circulation, they'd have found it by now. Right. Somehow. Right. Um, so I think there's probably still money out there somewhere in a bag that nobody's found yet because it's in a remote area. It could be hanging off the edge of a cliff and, you know, I'm sure, well, I'm sure it's probably rat nest, you know, a rat nest now or something like that. But that's my thoughts. There's no way that anybody could get away that easily, that scot free, without being ever seen again. I'm going to go with the we, Marvel comic we, theory. We found Bin Laden, so I'm sure this guy would have been found. I'm going to go with the Marvel comics theory. It was Loki, <laughs> right? <laughs> anybody who's seen possible. season two of Thor, oh, excuse me, of Loki, you get it. Yeah, it, it, it's possible that could be it. Um, now, seriously, though, um, either this dude was a master thief, got away with it, and, I don't know, went overseas and spent the money. How'd he I mean, get there? He'd have to be the, per it would have to be the perfect crime. And there's just, you know, the imperfections are showing. If part of the money is recovered 10 years later, just laying there. That means dude was probably laid out, like you said, there somewhere. 
or as he's coming down, he dropped the bag, didn't know where it went, so he took whatever he had with him. I mean, that's a possibility. But, but again, too, but there's no money spent. I mean, true that we that we're aware of. I would like to think that they would be able to locate said notes of, you know, from the national treasurer uh, that it was back in circulation or something of that nature. But um, there is absolutely. He he basically jumped out of that airplane and disappeared and has yet to be seen. I'm pretty sure he became mountain lion food. Yeah, yeah, because you would think that some hiker or somebody would have found remains or something. And that has not happened. I mean, and you know, any remains that would have happened, I'm sure would have been buried, drug apart. I mean who knows he could have landed over a body of water and drowned too and be at the bottom of the dam you know with the money you know the other half of the yeah, money that's too. the you other know, could have landed too. in a lake or something so i know you mentioned uh, a second ago if he wasn't trained in how to use his parachute if you land in water with a parachute you've got to be no be able to know how to get that thing off quick fast yes. and in a hurry and get it off of you before you drown because you will drown. It'll tie you up. Yep. And those things are heavier than you think. I then go back to 1972, it was, you said? Yes. 72 or, or was it 71? No, it was 72. So I'm pretty sure that the, you know, the parachute technology has expanded by leaps and bounds in the last 50 years. No, take how that safe? back. It was 71. But yeah, you're right. How safe were the parachutes in 1971? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like probably not as safe. You know, as they are now. And uh I mean, if they're anything like a military parachute that you can't steer them anywhere, you know, what kind of parachutes did they give? Did the government know that they could just get rid of this money and they decided to jinx this? <laughs> Jinx his parachute anyway, you know, figuring he was going to jump. You know, well, once he pulls, it's not going to come out and he's going to fall down to that's, the ground or what? That's the other thing. He he released the hostages and he wanted four parachutes. Now, why would he request four? How many bags of money did he have? Mm, good question. And that may be why you, you find that one bag of money. But it's interesting that there was no chute attached to it when it was found or unless, unless, you know, going with your theory that got caught in a tree and eventually, you know, it nature took its course or and, something. Yeah. But, you know, maybe, I don't know. It's, it's, it's one of those mysteries that will never, ever, ever, ever be solved. Well, it's interesting because you mentioned um, the parachute. How do we know that the government, being the government, decided, you know what? Let's give him those parachutes. Make them all defective. He'll land. We'll get our money back. He'll be dead because it won't pull. I mean, we don't know. And maybe they did get the money back and just never said anything. That, that's also true. Um, and wouldn't they be smart enough to track said parachutes? With what? How, they don't have, what? they didn't have GPS back in yeah, that. You're right. That's 1971. I need to, you, I need to keep it, keep it in the past. Keep it in the past. You, you can't, you can't ask Siri. <laughs> you're right. Siri, you're right. find my bag of money. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Right. I, I really think it was, I think his plan was a pretty good plan, but I think that uh, some unforeseen issue happened and he didn't make it. No. Um, now, bringing us up to date, uh, 52 years later, Eric Eulis, the amateur sleuth who made it his mission to solve the D.B. Cooper mystery, he thinks the infamous tie yields clues to finally reveal the skyjacker's true identity because anybody who knows db cooper had a suit and tie on when he hijacked the flight 
well-dressed thief. So he was the uh, George Clooney of uh, thieves. Now, let's see what uh, Euless says here. Uh, he's been uh, fighting to... Oh, okay. I had no idea the uh, FBI had the tie. Says Euless has been fighting to free D.B. Cooper's tie from FBI holds, even suing the government for access, saying that the 100,000 articles left behind on the clip-on fashion tie accessory can tell the definitive story about just who the tie belonged to and where it traveled. Um, wow. For a $2 tie back then? I wonder how you'd be able to tell whose it was. Because again, you know, just like you said, there was no GPS. I don't believe it's that we were really big on um, DNA either. How they, then. how they know it's his tie? That, uh, good question. Hmm. Did they find a body? Did they find clothing? Was the tie in the bag of money? Headquartered in the suburbs of Pittsburgh, a significant subcontractor sub all throughout the 1960s supplied a line share of titanium and stainless steel for Boeing aircraft. Eula said the metal fabric shop, yada, yada, yada. Not telling me how they got the tie. I'm going to say, say anything that you or I think of in this next 45 minutes. I'm sure they all thought of beforehand. I would hope so. I mean, you know. But I would assume that if they. Because like DNA can stay on. You know, uh, transferable DNA can stay on an item forever. As long as it's not washed away. Mm hmm. So with the technology we have now, we could theoretically take the metal clip and brush it for fingerprints or trace DNA and see if anything hits. I'm sure they've already done that. However, my thing is, how do they know it was his tie? That is very, if very you've, interesting. If you've never found a body. And maybe it could be this. How old's that Euless guy? Um, it doesn't say how old he is. Maybe he's D.B. Cooper, and it's a red herring. Trying to throw the uh, FBI off his scent? Just saying. Maybe it's a red herring. And, and you know, he's like... I mean, because how does he know it was D.B. Cooper's tie? Now, I will say this about the parachuting. Um, during the hijacking, Cooper demanded and received two main parachutes and two reserve chutes. The reserve chutes came uh, from a local skydiving school, and the two main chutes were supplied by a uh, local pilot, Norman Hayden, and uh, Earl Cossey, the parachute rigger who packed all four parachutes brought them to Cooper, described the two main chutes as emergency bailout chutes as opposed to sporting parachutes that skydivers would use. Uh, he further, further described that the main chutes as being like military chutes, they were rigged to open immediately upon uh, the ripcord being pulled and were incapable of being steered. Yeah, see, that's what I was wondering because military parachutes, a paratrooper, you they just they go straight down. Yeah, it, you just go wherever the wind takes you. I mm -hmm. mean, if you're if there's a if there's a wind blowing, you're just going to go. I had a cousin that was a paratrooper, and you know they they cannot steer. Now I don't know if that's different now, but I knew back then they couldn't they couldn't steer them. Yeah, and they're and they're and like oh. the mm -hmm. parachutes that we see now, which are more like kind of like a rectangle, you know. Yeah, and these are more of a circular mushroom, right. As they come down, you know, it's the kind of like a hot air balloon, the way that it comes down. So, you know, he, he could have landed just about anywhere. And if he was anywhere close to Washington, he could have landed in the middle of the damn ocean. 
Yeah. I mean, I would assume that modern day parachutes are a lot more steerable because you got to think for military operations, you want your guys to land where they want to land. I mean, yes and no, but like I'm when I'm saying they couldn't see her, I'm talking 20 years ago. Yeah. Yeah. I'm talking about ago. modern day parachutes. No. Well, yeah. But 20, 25 years ago is 2000. Yeah. They, they couldn't steer him then. No, no, definitely not. So 1971, he's SOL. Right. So, I mean, I don't know what the parachutes are now in military wise, if they are capable I mean, because basically when the whole point of a pair is I'm dropping them off in an area. So they're going to, you know, I'm going to have troops on the ground, like in a straight line. And it, they're going to come in as a platoon that way. I mm -hmm. don't want to drop everybody in one particular area because then, um, you know, if I was the enemy, yeah, that's where I could attack. But, you know, that's a whole that's military strategy. And somebody out there, I'm sure, knows who's a, who's been a paratrooper here you know, in the last couple of decades could probably educate us. I'd love to know. Yeah. I want to take a second and, uh, whatever platform you're listening to or watching us on, drop us a line, especially if you're familiar with this case, we always welcome everybody's two cents because we ain't got no sense. So we might as well, you know, have you weigh in and give us your two cents. That's right. But, um, It is interesting. So uh, I don't know if you've seen any of the sketches of Cooper. Mm -hmm. He looked to be in his what? Late thirties, maybe early forties. Mm, or you I would say, say late forties, early, early fifties. I think, you know, 30, you know, thirties, like between 30, 35 is how I look at him. Not necessarily old, but not young. Let's call him 35 for just a second. Okay. How old would he be now? Because now we're looking at 52 years later. Yeah, so he's 87, is that right? 87, 90, you know, just to spitball it, yeah. And moreover, and this is just me being funny, is there a statute of limitations on this? <laughs> right. Because now's the time to come out, DB. Yeah, I'd, I think it would be cool if 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 something like that, you know, some old man on his deathbed says, here's the bag of money and I'm D.B. Cooper and croaks. I think that'd be great. But I, I think he croaked a long time ago. Yeah, I mean. It's kind, kind of, of with the it's kind of like the Zodiac killer. You know, he was out there for three or four years and then nobody's ever heard from him again, it, you know, to this day. So obviously that could be one that we talk about at a later time, but you know, what happened to him? You know, I, I think he just died. I think this same thing, there's no, there's no trace evidence of him surviving nothing. I mean, he'd have been seen somewhere in the last 50 years. Yeah, because you got. And I'm sure that. he wasn't the only one in his family, right? Like he wasn't the last of his generation. DB Cooper may not even be his real name. His real name could be Donald Trump. How old's Donald Trump? Is he eighty something? Maybe that's how he started. So his that's fortune. how he got I his don't fortune, know. right? I'm just saying. That means he would have had to launder the money so he could keep the uh, the bills from being circulated. I'm telling well with all with all his buildings, I'm sure he could have figured out how to launder some money. Hmm. I'm gonna look at him in a different light during this election year. Uh, right. But guys, who do you think DB Cooper is? Do you believe that he's still alive? Do you believe that he got away with it? And do you believe that like we believe that he kicked the bucket? I I I believe that there had to be some sort of accident with the landing or he had a really really bad encounter in the water or the woods and that's why we haven't uh, seen nor heard from him again. I would say 
Because you did say he jumped out over Washington sky, right? Yes. It's a possibility he made it through the border of Canada and could have spent his days in Canada. Um, Because we probably wouldn't have looked there, I would assume. And I'm sure you could exchange money for Canada. I mean, I don't know if they, does Canada use American dollars or do they have their own dollars? They have system? their own. You know, maybe exchange it for them and live the rest of his life there. I mean, that 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 is a plausible um, explanation. You know, if he were to make it out, you know. Yeah, that is also interesting. I know Canada has its own currency, but I also know Canada is divided into two parts: the French Canadian side and um, the British Canadian side. I don't know if they have two different forms of currency, though. I do know that. And then what was it in 1971? I mean, that would be the thing. Because yeah. I'm sure it, it wasn't difficult to go across the border in 1971. Oh, no. No. Very, very interesting. Yeah. Guys, weigh in on this. Uh, leave us a comment. If you want to email us, we're always available. The Slightly Warped Podcast at Yahoo.com. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube, hit the comments there. Any podcast feed you can comment on as well. We'll take any theory at this point. Don't just listen to us. If you've got your own right? theory formed, let's have it. Because uh, we might be like, hmm, such and such said dot, dot, dot. And, you know, we, we revisit this for a few minutes just to. Yeah. And if you have a really good one theory, man, we'll mention your name and. Hell, if it's really good, we'll invite you to come on the show with us and explain yourself. Especially if you happen to be a 180-something-year-old D.B. Cooper. Exactly. You know, we're willing to tell your story, buddy. Yeah. I bet you we could, I bet you we could beat Cat Williams' record. I'm just saying. <laughs> oh, wow. Um, Before I transition into sports, I want to ask you about this Cat Williams deal because we've been gone for a few weeks. Mm-hmm. What is your thoughts on this whole thing with Cat? You seen that meme where you got Michael Jackson just sitting there watching a movie eating popcorn? I have that, not seen kinda, that. that. That's kind of where I am. You know, it says I'm here for the comments. You know, that's what the meme is. But mm -hmm. that's basically how I am. I actually, and this would be a great subject sometime for us to broach, uh, you know, talking Illuminati, um, that type of stuff in Hollywood. Mm. Um, it, you know, it would, it would go, it would go deeper into things such as that, you know, cause it's, there's a biblical aspect to it as well. That's worth discussing. Um, I do think it's very eye opening what he said. It was a very entertaining interview long. I mean, it was almost three hours and I, yeah. it didn't seem like, it didn't seem like it, you know? Um, but the, the the funny thing is that I see because what had happened, what the first week of January and who we are in the middle of January, not one person that he put on blast has come out and said he was lying. They've deflected quite a bit, but no, they haven't said. Nobody's ever said that's wrong. That never happened and blah, blah, blah. They may have retorted back and tried to, like you said, deflect or throw shade on cat, but Nobody has said he was lying. <laughs> so it's kind of like, it kind of just makes you kind of go, hmm, I wonder, you know, and I, I'm sure that's not, we're going to get even bigger bombshells from this, I think, before the end of the year. I'm, you know, I'm just, I'm glad that he is um, shining light on that particular subject. Yeah. But believe me, if they say that he hung himself, he didn't. No, I, I don't think so either. I think he told the truth on a lot of things. Uh, at the very least, his truth. And it opened a lot of eyes. And like you said, it's going to open a lot of doors and some more truths are going to come out. Yes. All right, real quick before we get out of here, we're going to talk about our favorite subject, the National Football League. Mm -hmm. Um, The wild card round is officially over. Congrats to uh, the following teams, the Chiefs, the Bills, the uh, Packers, and um, who won last night? 
the Buccaneers. Tampa Bay. All right. And Detroit. Oh, and yeah, Houston. Detroit. And Houston. And yeah. Houston. I'm sorry. I left those two teams out. I shouldn't have did that. Do you think that Houston has a chance against the Ravens? My brain says no, but my heart says yes, just because of uh, the way that they kind of dismantled Cleveland. But it was in Houston, so I could see that. I think they'll give Baltimore a run for their money. I don't think they'll win, but I think they'll they'll definitely not just roll over and like the Cowboys did with the Packers. Yeah. Um, speaking of the Cowboys, how much of that was the Packers – winning being dominant how much of that was the uh cowboys just laying an egg cowboying <laughs> um i want to say it was more green bay mm. cuz i don't want to i don't want to take away from what they did um but i also want to throw a little bit of blame on jerry jones Mm -hmm. Because, you know, before that game, he had went on an interview and said, you know, well, depending on how Mike McCarthy does in the playoffs, we'll figure out what we're doing, blah, blah, blah. So you already are basically sowing seeds of doubt into a head coach, in my mind. Not saying this was the reason, but, you know, it makes him second guess certain things, you know. Um, yeah. But by the, by the time that he, you know, they were down – you know, before blink the blink of an eye. So I think by that time he was just scrambling, but um, I think they just got out coached and outplayed. Speaking of the coach, the over under Mike McCarthy still has a job before our next episode comes out. Man, I'm, I'm, I'd say he's gone. I can't argue that. And if I was Dallas, I would hire John Harbaugh right now. You mean Jim? Or J Jim Harbaugh, yeah. I would hire him right now. Well, I hate to tell you this, but I think uh, he's going to get the job in uh, just, San just, Diego. I keep wanting to call him San Diego. Just because, he, just because he went there to interview doesn't mean he's got the job. There are plenty other tasty jobs out there. I think Belichick is the Cowboys' next head coach. I don't think he's going to match well with Jerry Jones. I could be wrong. But I don't think you will. All right. Um, the Buffalo Bills. Mm -hmm. Are they really that good? After yes. all, it was the Steelers. Yes, they are really that good. Are they beatable? Yes. They got Kansas City coming up. Josh Allen is that guy. But Josh Allen is also that guy. He's going to make some really cool plays, and then he's going to give you an opportunity to intercept him at least two or three times. So you the problem I, is you have to take advantage of those interceptions. We said at the beginning of the season, hey, I'm going to look at Burrow, and I'm going to look at Josh Allen because I want to see just how good they are. I know you made fun of me, but there's a lot more questions than answers at the end of this year. Burrow, He's not that just because he's injured. Well, he's injured, so you can't really say you looked at him. He was injured, but so when, you can't really say you looked at him. Here's the thing. That's why I said there's a lot more questions than answered. When is he not injured? Last year, year before last. I guess. Um, the I mean, granted, he's played. Him. He's been in the league for four years, and two of those years he's been injured. I get it. But the two years that he's played, he went to the Super Bowl and the AFC Championship game. True. True. So, so when he's healthy, he's that guy. And I, I do, but the reason why I do need to see more of that next year, comparing those two quarterbacks, Josh Allen is far and away more superior from what I've seen, just from what I've seen so far. That doesn't mean he he's, is. He's more um, available because he's playing. Yeah. If if you had if you held my feet to the fire and said, hey. You're starting your own uh, team, and you can't you can't have Patrick Mahomes because obviously he's the number one quarterback. Period. But you can either have Josh Allen or Joe Burrow. That would be a tough decision. Hey, whoever you in pick, my mind is the kicker. The 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 the, the mindset is that 
you know, the thing that Josh does differently is Josh can run. And, and, and Josh is a big, bigger guy than people actually think he is. And what is he? Six, six. And I forget yeah, how many a, pounds he is. He's a big guy. He's a big dude. He's a big dude. And the problem though, is he keeps running like that. He will not be available because he's going to get hurt. Now, uh, Burrow is more like a, he's more Brady esque. He's a pocket passer. He's cerebral. Uh, I would say, I would even take Brady out and say he's more like Peyton Manning. Uh, you know, okay. more like John Elway type of thing. Although John Elway is a lot more like Josh Allen. Josh Allen's more like John Elway with the running and the arm cannon and things like that. Physical attributes. Right. Uh, but, you know, Burrow is cerebral. You know, he's, he's that guy. But well, yes, I want him I to rest up and I want him to heal, be 100% because I want to see what he's got to offer next year. Because I think, I that think that he's team... going to be hurting next year because a lot of their, I mean, I think T. Higgins and not Chase, who's the other guy? Boyd. Mm -hmm. Those guys, Boyd and Higgins are going to be up for uh, contracts. Mm. And they're not going to be, and they're not going to be able to, to fill them both because they can't afford them. Oh, this is going to be interesting. And as long as Orlando Brown Jr. is Joe Burrow's left tackle, he will remain and still remain to get injured every year. Because that's, what's ha that's what happened to Mahomes last year in his ankle. And that's why he's not there anymore. One of them. All right. One last question. What's the game you most look forward to that doesn't involve the Chiefs and the Bills? Man, all of them. I really like. I really like them all. I'm. I'm looking forward to that Detroit game. I'm rooting. I'm rooting for Detroit to to make a make a push. Yeah, I, but you I know like, that. I like those that lines, Houston. Man. That Houston Baltimore game is going to be fun to watch. The Packers against the Niners is going to be fun to watch. You know, Bucks versus the Lions is going to be fun to watch. The Chiefs and the Bills are going to be fun to watch. It's just going to be. It's a good matchup all the way around. It will be. All right, gang, remember, leave us a comment, like, share, subscribe if you're on YouTube. We enjoyed this one. Look forward to being there next week. We will be back. Maybe Mike McCarthy won't. Big show. Take a stone out of <laughs> here. Lord willing. Hey, hug your loved ones. Tell them you love them. Tomorrow's not promise. See you next week. Good night, everybody.